That was locker room talk. Uh, I'm not proud of it. I am a person who has great respect for people, for my family, for the people of this country, and certainly I'm not proud of it. But that was something that uh, happened. If you look at uh, Bill Clinton, far worse, minor words, and his was action. His was what he's done to women. There's never been anybody in the history of politics in this nation that's been so abusive to women. So you can say any way you want to say it, but Bill Clinton was abusive to women. Mm, that's from last night. Donald Trump defending himself. When asked about those comments that he made about women in the past, he apologized again, tried to move past it, get back to the issues. But the controversy will linger in some people's minds, uh, particularly with women voters, perhaps, who he's had some trouble with. So Lisa Booth joins us now, Washington Examiner uh, contributor and president of and founder of High Noon Strategies. Julie Roginski is a Democratic strategist and a Fox News contributor. Uh, well, welcome to both of you. Good to Good have morning. you both here. Hi, you Martha. Know, I mean, we all sort of, you get the structure of the campaign. They want to focus on the issues, and I think a lot of people will be relieved to focus on the issues um, going forward. However, women voters are the area that he has had the most trouble with. So how did this apology go over with them, do you think, Julie? Well, I don't know that it was much of an apology. It was sort of a parenthetical. I made a mistake, but let me just tell you, it was locker room talk. Uh, Bill Clinton's done worse, et cetera, et cetera. That's not much of an apology. Look, uh, let me speak right now as a mother of a small boy. Martha, I know you, ha you have boys as well. Yep. You don't want to raise your kids, and especially your sons, to believe this is acceptable locker room behavior, that this is something that just happens in the locker room. So let's excuse it because this is the kind of stuff boys will be boys and we'll just talk about. I think mothers, women, but especially mothers, this, this is not the lesson they want the leader of the free world to impart to their sons, and I don't think anything he said last night is going to change our opinion on that. All right, so Lisa, what's, how can he work on that? What would you recommend? Well, Martha, I agree with Julie in the fact that Donald Trump's statements are inexcusable, but so are Bill Clinton's uh, actions. And this is what is baffling to me is the fact that the left has embraced an individual like Bill Clinton who has been accused of sexual assault and rape for the past 20 years. They have built him up. He has been on the campaign trail. And it's not the fact that he is uh, Hillary Clinton's husband. It's the fact that he is a top surrogate out for her. He is out there on the campaign trail every single day representing her campaign. He would have a major role in her White House. She has said as much. She has touted his time in the White House. So what I find uh, baffling is the fact that the left is so quick to attack Donald Trump's uh, comments, which they should because they are inexcusable, but the fact that they have no, had no problem embracing Bill Clinton, and that is the hypocrisy that I think yeah. Americans see. But to, 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 but to your question earlier, what Donald Trump needs to do is now move forward move past these comments, move past the Bill Clinton stuff, and he needs to focus on the issues because there are 55% of Americans who want big changes in terms to the economy and to politics, and he needs to reach out to those voters who want change because Hillary Clinton is the status quo. Hmm. You know, I, there's a hypocrisy, Julie, on, on the left on this issue to say that, you know, they're so horrified, so deeply, deeply offended. And I get it. I mean, th those comments are deeply offensive. Uh, so I guess you have to either get used to sort of this level of crudeness, um, but let's, let's face the facts that exist on both sides. Well, look, I'll speak for myself. I can't speak for anybody else, but speak, speaking to, for myself from the left, you can say that Juanita Broderick, for example, has a credible argument to make about Bill Clinton. I, I, don't, I wasn't there, but I won't dismiss her allegations out of hand. I don't think that's proper. Or, or having read about them, that I necessarily think she's incorrect in what she said. What I find disturbing is that the sins of the husband are being cast upon the wife. And every time I hear, but Hillary Clinton enabled him, Hillary Clinton went after these women. You know, if you look at what Juanita Broderick said, she said that Hillary Clinton came up to her after she had volunteered for Bill Clinton's campaign back in 1976 and thanked her for helping her husband. Juanita Broderick took that to mean as a threat. I take that to mean as somebody whose husband did not fill her in on what, on what may or may not have happened, thanking a campaign volunteer for her service. Well, so, you know, so, I mean, so, yeah, so to I me, wanna, why, why are we... Into, that's not, you know, I, I understand that, but, let me, but let, me finish, let me just finish my point on this. What you're essentially trying sure. to do is say that Hillary Clinton is somehow responsible for any bad acts that her husband did, and I'm sorry, I'm not going to hold a wife no, responsible who was the victim to, and cheated on her. That's not what I said. 
Well, you're blaming Bill Clinton. Like no, he's not, not on the ballot. Said. He's not on the ballot. No, though, but Lisa. the point I'm making, but but Julie, but Julie, look, the point I was making, which is a fair one, is the fact that Hillary Clinton has Bill Clinton out there. Every top surrogates are fair game in politics. If you have someone out there every single day representing your campaign on the campaign trail, reaching out to voters, you're touting his record. He's going to have a major role in the White House. That is fair game to bring that up. So I think Donald Trump invoking that as a defense last night was right. fair game. I'm with you oh, and, and oh, everyone okay. in America, I think, right now, that once, hold on, Julie, Julie, I'm with everyone that I think the fact that this has become the norm in politics is depressing. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of Americans want the issues to be discussed, want the candidates Agreed. to reach beyond this. But every, but both candidates last night were rolling around in the mud. So spare me the fact that somehow, you know, Donald Trump is this monster and Hillary Clinton is, is you know, this this wonderful candidate who's rising above it because right, that's wanna, simply um, not the case. What? I just want to get, but they I, should I, 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 I